The Sunshine State is undergoing a big shift in how it approaches the pandemic. Omicron is, is extremely contagious. Not only is the spread of this virus inevitable, it is necessary. This shift coincides with a change in Chief Health Officer. In December, just as the state's borders reopened, infectious disease specialist John Gerard took over. The change in tone was immediate. In order for us to go from, an, from the pandemic phase to an endemic phase, the virus has to be widespread. That was really setting the tone for, for his tenure as the Chief Health Officer. You know, I think people appreciate the fact that that sort of honest and open candour about how we're going to handle it. Dr Gerard has pushed back against suggestions further restrictions are needed to slow the spread of Omicron. I acknowledge this is controversial and other, other, others would not agree with this, but I, I just, we are not going to stop this virus. And a, a minor change like imposing a dense limit of one in two square metres, I, I think the evidence suggests that it's not going to have a major impact on the virus, but it would have a major impact on the greater society. It's a dramatic difference. We've gone from uh, no Queenslander should have to worry about any risk whatsoever to we're all uh, likely to be exposed in some way to, to COVID. We're talking three or four months. That's John Gerard replaced months, Jeanette so Young, who stepped down after 15 years in the job to become the state's governor. I'm not comfortable with any deaths that are preventable. Her COVID containment strategy was marked by short, sharp lockdowns and tough border closures resulting in limited outbreaks and few deaths. Now look, the approach of elimination, which mainly involved uh, Dr Jeanette Young, uh, where she did, I think, a, a really tremendous job, uh, had a completely different set of challenges to where we find ourselves today. So there was a time for several months towards the end of 2021 where Queenslanders were not allowed to return to Queensland, even if they were doubly vaccinated, even if they had a negative test and even if they had a home in Queensland where they could uh, self-isolate. In hindsight, was Jeanette Young too slow to accept more risk and let some of those people in? No, not at all. The original strategy was a cont containment strategy to allow people to get vaccinated, and that required very strong infection control measures. We've seen that with the, the, vi the virus, as soon as you just relax a little bit, the virus will spread. It's really important that anyone who lives in that Bingley... There are questions about whether Dr Young did enough to prepare the public for the radical switch which is now taking place. Her defenders point to comments like this she began making late last year. We are all of us going to end up being infected with COVID, every single person in Queensland. Yeah, we were always going to have to go from zero COVID into living with it at some stage or another. And whether it happened under one chief health officer's watch or another, uh, probably is neither here nor there. Dr Young was scathing about the AstraZeneca vaccine at a time when many Queenslanders weren't fully vaccinated. I don't want an 18-year-old in Queensland dying from a clotting um, illness who, if they got COVID, probably wouldn't die. I think part of the lag of Queensland versus the other states in vaccination are down to those comments. Uh, when your chief health officer starts saying that she doesn't want to see people vaccinated for any reason, that, that's um, extremely concerning to people. Anyone who's got any concerns at all and would like to know something about the AstraZeneca vaccine should immediately go and talk to their GP about it. Do you need to do more to endorse that vaccine though, given that it may be harmful, your comments? No, I have endorsed it every single day. Hospital admissions are escalating and deaths are rising in Queensland, with the Omicron peak predicted around the end of January. We certainly are going to have a rough trot in the next month or so, and our hospitals will be put under strain. John Gerard's been a really straight shooter up until now, and I hope he can maintain that and not start um, learning how to avoid questions. 
Dr Gerard, there's been a big shift in the health strategy since December and we're starting to see, unfortunately, some of the hard consequences of that. How do you make sure the public doesn't lose confidence in the strategy you're pursuing now? It has always been inevitable, always been inevitable, that the virus would spread through Queensland after the borders were opened and the restrictions were released. What goes a bit beyond what was expected was the, just the speed with which this virus has spread. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.